and welcome to the Mount Bethel Church of God. We're glad that you are here to worship with us today. You could have gone anywhere else, scrolled and clicked anywhere else. We're honored that you chose to worship with us today. And on the behalf of our pastors, Bishop Dr. Cecil and Pastor Dolores Molink, we want to tell you thank you for being with us. For the next couple of weeks, we're going to be worshiping with our global ministry in a different way. You see, God has been so good and you've been so good to us and you've helped us to reach a level we didn't expect to reach. We are on the verge of burning our mortgage. Hallelujah. There'll be more coming, but you can save the date now. October 1st, 2023, we'll have a great big burning of the mortgage service. So we're getting ready. God has blessed us. We're going to do some cosmetics on the building, some redecorating. So we are unable to stream our normal Sunday service the way we normally would do it. So today, this Sunday, we have a special word for you. It's not a rerun. It's a fresh word from the Lord. So stay tuned. We're getting ready to go to some wonderful praise and worship. We're going to give together and then comes the word. Again, thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers. Like and share this service because there's a word in the house. And I don't know about you, but I'm ready to receive it. God bless. The Lord, shall we praise the Lord, everybody? Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's lift up the name of Jesus this morning because he's worthy. He's worthy of our praise this morning. Hallelujah. 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 We bless the Lord this morning. Hallelujah, because he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, we give him glory this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We put our hands together.
There's no God like Jehovah. 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 There's no God. Everybody sing. There's no. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no. There's no God like Jehovah. There is no God like Jehovah. There's no God. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There is no God. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God. There's no God like Jehovah. There is no God like Jehovah. There's no God. There's no God like Jehovah. up the name of Jesus this morning. Can we lift up the name of Jesus this morning? Hallelujah. Our God is worthy to be praised. Come on church, let's lift up the name of Jesus this morning. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. He's worthy this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He's worthy this morning. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord is our strength this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other for it reaches me. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no to me you are you are my strength oh strength like strength like no other one voice strength like no other strength like no other for it reaches, reaches to me oh sing you are my strength Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Oh, strength like. Strength like no other. Oh, for it reaches. Reaches to me. Oh, in the fullness. In the fullness of your grace. In the power of your name. In the power of your name.
beautiful singing this morning strength and life for it reaches one more time sing you are my strength oh strength like no other strength like no other to me now can we lift up the name of Jesus this morning can we lift up the name of Jesus this morning Lord you are my strength this morning can we lift up the name of Jesus this morning we're not looking at the program but can we lift up the name of Jesus this morning because he's worthy he's worthy this morning Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Of great things. That's right. It's 2023. Two, three. The word of the Lord declares in Matthew 18 and verse 20, wherever two or three are gathered in the midst, is God able to be a blessing to us? So Lord, we thank you for receiving your gifts today. Allow us to expect great things in 2023. I'm excited to give. So join us in the sanctuary or online through PayPal using donate at mtbethelcog.org or through cash app dollar sign mtbethelcog and you can give through electronic debit by contacting our reverend jacqueline mullins at 609-531-8388 however you choose to give let's give with an expectation of great things god bless praise the lord praise the lord I'm just going to ask if you could please stand and you'll be in the hands of the ushers. Praise the Lord. We're going to give cheerfully today in the house of the Lord. You're excellent, Jesus, you're excellent. You're excellent in all the earth. You're excellent, Jesus, you're excellent. You're excellent in all the earth. Everybody sing, you're excellent, Jesus, you're excellent. You're excellent. You're excellent in all the earth. You're excellent. You're excellent, Jesus, you're excellent.
Reverend Jacqueline Mullins, a native of England, she's the youngest of six and immigrated to the U.S. in 2002 after marrying Bishop Gary Sean Mullins. She is the mother of three beautiful children, Chloe, Ashley, and Sean. She has earned a master's degree in management from Thomas Edison State University. She is an integral part to the Mount Bethel Church of God ministry, serving as minister of music, praise and worship leader, organizer, and so much more. She has served in ministry in various capacities, such as local to state to international. There is a word in the house, so please receive God's servant of the hour, our very own Reverend Jacqueline Mullings. Well, a blessed good morning to you. I hope you are doing well wherever you are, whether you're in your home, you're at work, you're in your car. I pray God's blessing is on you this beautiful morning. So glad to be in front of you today just to share a little word that the Lord has laid on my heart. I hope you enjoyed the singing and the worship and we're just going to jump right into the word. Now, this is a very popular scripture, but it's a scripture that I love to read because it talks about these great giants of the faith. And it just, you know, it just motivates me to con- to continue in my spiritual walk and to know that there are those before me who faced such adversity, but they still held on to their faith. So I'm going to read it just three verses from Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11, I'm going to read from 1 to 3. Hebrews 11, verses 1, 2, and 3. And it reads, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And the verse I want to just focus on today is verse 2. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Somebody say good report. Good report. And I'm going to read verse 3 again. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. I'll let you marinate on that for a little bit. So, verse 2. For by the elders obtained a good report. Well, what is a good report? What does it mean? And in this context that we read in Hebrews 11, the writer demonstrates that godly faith is real trust. Right. Hebrews 11 is all about faith and all about these people who exercise their faith in God. And because of their faith and because of their trust, they obtained a good report. And what we've seen of God's nature and character should lead us to trust him. We know that he's a healer. We know that he's a deliverer. We know that he's a provider. He's a way maker. So then that leads us to obedience because we've proven who he is. And therefore, we want to obey him. So the three verses that I read talks about having confidence and hope in the promised word of God, just as these giants of the faith did, as God's promises were revealed to them. So if you look at Abraham, you know, God promised that he would be the father of many nations, but yet he had no children and he was an old man. But because of the promises of God and the faith that Abraham had in God, And even when he went to uh, sacrifice his own son, the one son that God had given him, Isaac, we know that he trusted God that even if he were to sacrifice his son, God's promises would still come to pass. And it is taking God at his word, knowing that he is too faithful to fail and he will never go back on his promises because he's not a man that he should lie. So when God gives us a promise, we can trust him that he will bring it to pass. So when we look at verse 2 where it says, for by the elders obtained, for, for by it the elders obtained a good report, the it here is referred to as faith. 
by it the elders obtained a good report. So by faith the elders obtained a good report, a trusting reliance on God. So in this context, this is not just mere belief in an intellectual sense. I know that God can do it. But it's, and neither is it a blind assumption, oh, he'll do it, I know he'll do it. But it's a choice to follow God with confidence, standing on his word, not just assuming, not just having, you know, that intellectual sense, well, my mind says he can do it, but I'm going to stand firm on the word of God and I'm going to trust and believe that God will do it. Even when we don't fully know or understand what lies ahead. When you trust God, when you have that faith, nothing can hinder you and nothing will stop God from doing what he said. And so the famous figures listed later on in Hebrews 11 are among those people of old, those giants of the faith, who are commended on the basis of their faith. So we know that Hebrews 11 is a lot of by faith. By faith, by faith Moses, by faith Abraham, by faith this person, that person. It's all the basis of their faith. And so a recurring theme in the book of Hebrews is that God had always intended to replace the old covenant with the new covenant. And if you remember a while ago, I I talked about the new covenant and the old covenant. But using various quotations from scripture, the writer of Hebrews explained that animal sacrifices and rituals were never meant to be our ultimate answer for sin. And we know that because of the new covenant, which is Jesus, we no longer have to go to the priest to offer sacrifices on our behalf. We now in turn can go to the Father for ourselves. And these were the, these were just merely symbols of true salvation found in Christ. And this makes faith not works the method of salvation for those that were living in the era of the old covenant. It, they had to go by faith. They had no other choice. They had no revelation of Jesus at that time. But all they had was their faith. And so as the chapter continues... The writer explains how the examples of figures such as Abraham, Moses, Gideon, Rahab, and even Sarah prove that God was responding to their faith. Their obedience and their actions were products of saving faith, not the cause of their salvation. God honored their actions, but did so because of the faith which produced works. So again, going back to the example of Abraham having to sacrifice Isaac, he would have done it because his faith was so high, was so confident in the God that he served, that he would he was willing to sacrifice his very son. So let's take a quick look at some of these giants of the faith. Sometimes their reports didn't look or sound too good. But whose report will you believe? We read of a man named Job, and according to the Bible, Job was a devout man who prayed and he worshipped God. God spoke highly of his servant and his faithfulness. We know that Job was rich upon rich upon rich. And because of Job's faithfulness and the way that he served the Lord, despite of his riches, or in spite of his riches, God was able to, you know, talk and brag about my servant Job. He said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? And God brought Satan's attention to Job's love for God, which made Satan jealous. Now Job was, he was rich. He had cattle. He had land. He had a beautiful family. He had everything that he needed, but he lost everything. We know that there was a storm. He lost his children. He lost his cattle. He lost all the land, all the crops. Everything was wiped out. God gave Satan the permission to to totally obliterate the lifestyle that Job knew that he was accustomed to. But God said, the only thing you cannot do is touch his life, spare his life. Because God had so much confidence in Job that he knew that if he took everything away, 
Job was still going to trust him. Job was still going to serve him. Can God have that same confidence with us? Can he have that same confidence with me that if he wiped out everything I had tomorrow, would I still serve him in spirit and in truth? So we know that Job lost everything that he had. And his friends came to visit him after these terrible events. His friends, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. And they questioned the actions that would have led to such suffering. Did Job sin? Did he, you know, do something that was terrible? Why was God so angry with Job? It must have been that he sinned. They blamed Job for the evil things that happened to him because they did not see or know the plans of God. So in their fleshly minds, they could not understand why God would allow his faithful servant to suffer such woes, such terrible catastrophes. And the New Testament provides an answer to this question. God allowed Jesus to suffer pain and shame on the cross because God had an ultimate plan for humanity. And if the Father allowed his beloved Son to suffer the way that Jesus did on the cross, you know that it was a cruel death. So then why cannot he allow a simple man such as Job to suffer so that the Father's purpose might be accomplished. The story of Job reminds us that God has a plan in everything that he does. But can you imagine what would have happened if Job had believed what his so-called friends were saying, that his sin had called, caused him to lose everything, that because he wasn't living right, he lost his children, he lost his land, he lost his cattle. If Job didn't trust God completely, he would have believed their report. And even Job's very wife said to him, why don't you just curse God and die? His own wife told him to curse God and die. But Job was steadfast in his faith. He believed the report of the Lord. He believed that God was still in control. And the Bible tells us that everything was restored to Job. He even got double for his trouble. And so no matter what people might say, no matter how they may judge us, no matter how they may look at us, we must hold fast to the promise that God has given us. We must believe the report of the Lord. And so if we look at the story of Rahab, we see a woman who really didn't know God. She was a prostitute, but God was still able to use her. And in the book of Joshua, we see when when the Hebrews were camped at Shittim and Joshua sent spies um, into the Jordan Valley, which was across from Jericho, because they wanted to take the land. Joshua sent out two spies to examine Examine Jericho, the fighting force, the army that was there, the wall, the layout. He sent the spies to go spy out the land. And we know the story that the spies ended up hiding in Rahab's house because they, the king or whoever had gotten wind of the fact that there were spies in the land. And Rahab hid them in her house. And we know that it was constructed in the city wall and later they were able to escape over the wall. <clears throat> Now, the men who went to seize the spies asked Rahab to bring them out. But rather, she covered them under bunches of flax on the roof and protected them from being captured and ultimately being killed. Then she helped them to escape after they after they promised to help save her and her family when the Israelites attacked Jericho. Now, Rahab's life is a great story with many lessons. But we cannot miss the point that Rahab was a harlot. She was a prostitute, a lady of the night. That was her occupation. That was what she does. That was how she made her money. And so the men hid there because people would be accustomed to seeing strangers coming in and out and going in and out at all hours of the day and night because that was her job. So we cannot deny the fact that, you know, Rahab really didn't know the Lord and she also lied to the men that came looking for the spies, that they were not there. So 
Is there anything really good that we can say about Rahab? Hmm. Yes. In Hebrews 11, verse 31, it says that she was a woman of faith. Read it in the word. Hebrews 11, 31 says, By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. She became a believer. She trusted God to deliver her. And she is mentioned in Hebrews 11 with Moses and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Joseph and Gideon in that great hall of fame as one of the giants of faith in Hebrews 11. Her present situation didn't mean that, you know, it didn't mean that she would not be able to inherit eternal life. When everybody had written her off as a, a, you know, a, a woman of the night, she chose to trust God and to believe his word. Whose report will you believe? Will you believe what people say about you? Or do you know God for yourself? Do you believe that God can change any situation? Whose report will you believe? Another woman who refused to let a negative report stop her from getting her breakthrough is the woman with the issue of blood. And we all know the story. For 12 long years, she went to doctor after doctor, spending all that she had. And the Bible tells us she didn't get better. She got worse. But she refused to listen to the doctors. She believed that God was a healer. She had a negative report, but she didn't choose to believe it. She heard that Jesus was passing through the town. And even though at that time, because she was bleeding, she was considered unclean. She believed that if she could just get to the master, even though she shouldn't be around people, if she could just push her way through, if she could just forget all the negativities she had heard over the last 12 years, she would get a breakthrough. And that's what happened. She pushed her way to Jesus. She said, if I could just touch the very hem, just the, just the tip of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. And because of her faith, she was healed that very instant. It didn't take days. It didn't take weeks. It, she was healed right in that very moment when she just touched the hem of his garment. Saints, we have to keep pushing. We have to keep pressing. We have to keep praying. We have to keep moving forward, no matter what the doctor says, no matter what our family and friends might say. Because sometimes it's, it's the people that are closest to you that are giving you the negative report, that are not having the faith that you have, that are trying to bring you down. They're with their, you know, their judgment, their negativity, their lack of faith. But no matter what they tell you on the job, to anyone who told you you were good enough or that you were never going to make it or you were never going to amount to anything, to anyone who ever told you you were not qualified or that you're an embarrassment or you're insignificant, God's word says you are a child of the King. You are a child of the Most High God. God's word says that by his stripes, we are healed. God's word says the cattle on a thousand hills belong to him. So if he has to kill a goat to feed you, he's going to do it. God's word says that you are the head and never the tail. That you are above and not beneath. You can make it. You are special. You are anointed. You will succeed. You will pass that class. You will get that promotion. Your loved ones will be saved. Your house will be delivered. You will get provision. You will be sustained. You will be debt free. Whose report will you believe? I choose to believe the report of the Lord. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Let's pray together. At this time, I want you to know that the blessings of the Lord belong to you. You look good in God's eyes. He loves you and he wants the best for you. But you got to believe what he says about you. Forget the negative reports. Forget what everybody has to say. Focus on what God says. Whose report will you believe?
I will believe the report of the Lord. Father God, we thank you for your word that assures us that we are well able. Just as you were with the Israelites, you said that we would not, they did not need to fight in the battle because the battle already belongs to you. Lord, you said we don't even have to fight because you will fight for us. The promises that you have given us, God, they are promises that you will and must deliver on. God, so when we hear the negative and when we hear the naysayers, God, we can stand firm on your word. Lord, when we receive a negative doctor's report, we can say, I will, I choose to believe the report of the Lord. God, we thank you for your goodness, for your grace, for your saving power. We thank you for keeping us from day to day. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us on our jobs. We thank you for giving us gainful employment, Lord, so that we can give back to you. We want to thank you, God, for our children, Lord, as they're in school and they're being protected, oh God, because uh, there's so much going on in the world as we walk on the streets, as we drive our cars, God. We want to thank you for your protection. Hallelujah. We believe the report that we are surrounded by this great cloud of witness, oh God, and that you promise never to leave us or forsake us. We just want to thank you for reminding us to stand on your word and to hold fast to your promises and to believe the report that you have given unto us. We thank you, we bless you, and we praise you. For there's no one like you, God, in Jesus' name. Let the church say, Amen. God bless you. We want to thank you for tuning in to Mount Bethel Church of God. We're located on 491 South Broad Avenue, sorry, 491 Bellevue Avenue in this great city of Trenton, New Jersey. If you're ever in the area, come on by. We'd love to see you in the house. We just welcome you to come and join us. And we're so glad that you're even tuning in today. Be blessed. Be blessed and may the Lord cover and keep you as you remember to listen to his report. Amen.